Alors, euh, merci euh, tout le monde d'être venu. Euh, donc, aujourd'hui, on a notre formule, notre nouvelle formule euh, qui va éventuellement devenir habituelle. Euh, le premier présentateur est, euh, excusez-moi, euh, Liu Liu euh, de Wuhan en Chine, originaire de Wuhan en Chine, qui fait son doctorat avec euh, William Wichak Krempa. Oui, William. Ah, pardon, excuse-moi. Euh, et euh, donc, il va nous faire une petite présentation de, de, de 10 minutes euh, sur le, le Quantifying Entanglement in Many Body Systems. Et ensuite, on aura la présentation euh, de euh, Jeter Hall. Euh, donc, tout de suite après. Merci. Okay. Uh, thanks for the invitation and good morning. Uh, my name is uh, Luke Lu. And uh, I'll talk to you about my research in uh, quantum entanglement. Um, I'm mainly be talking about the uh, recent uh, paper we put on archive called uh, Entanglement Microscopy. Uh, it's a uh, work that's done uh, with, oh, I think the name is with William, uh, who's in the audience, <laughs> but everyone knows him. Uh, uh, we collaborated with people who do quantum Monte Carlo, and uh, together we're able to study the entanglement structure of the quantum antibody system. So to begin with, uh, let's define quantum entanglement uh, to systems which could be uh, completely described separately come together and then they interact with uh, for some time after they separate they can no longer be described independently as before um, so that's how Schrodinger defines uh, entanglement and for him uh, this is not uh, one but the characteristic of quantum mechanics distinguishing it from its classical counterparts now for example for a hydrogen molecule the entanglement uh, between the, so in the ground state, the, the, the two electrons are in a singular state, which is maximally entangled. Uh, there, the entanglement is pretty obvious from the uh, wave function. But uh, when we go to a more complicated the condensed matter system, uh, we have n number of particles, which is macroscopic. And then we have two to the n number of terms in the wave function. So it's much more difficult to quantify um, the entanglement structure there. So what do we do? Um, we take a microscope figuratively, and uh, we look at only part of the system, and uh, we let the system evolve, and we record the information of only that local system. Um, so here is, a, for example, a transverse field Ising model. Um, and uh, in quantum Monte Carlo, that's exactly what we do. Uh, we take a large system, we sample uh, how the system evolves, and then uh, we record the local density, uh, reduced density matrix of say three spins here, uh, three neighboring spins. And that way we can quantify uh, the entanglement structure and uh, the information is more manageable. So here I'll first uh, uh, say something about uh, two-party entanglement. Uh, for a pure state, um, say you have, if you have a wave function on A, you divide it into A1 and A2, uh, it is easy to define. Uh, a state that is entangled is not separable. Separable means that you can uh, separately describe the wave function in A1 and A2, and uh, the complete state is the tensor product of them. Uh, in the mixed state, uh, there are also some uh, classical statistical correlations between them, and a separable state would be a uh, tensor product between uh, different density matrices. Uh, for a pure state, uh, the measurement of entanglement uh, is the entanglement entropy, uh, which sort of measures how uncertain you are about the uh, system A1, uh, because there's a certain amount of information hidden in the state. If it's not hidden locally, then it's hidden globally between A1 and A2. So the more uncertain I am locally, the more uh, entangled the state is. Uh, in the mixed state, uh, we cannot use a measure like that because um, the uncertainty of A1 can come from its correlation with A2 or its correlation with B. So we have to resort to other measures. Um, so far, it's there's no perfect measure, but one popular choice is called the negativity, which makes use of properties of the tensor uh, product. Um, so let's look at the, the negativity as a measure of quantum entanglement between two neighboring spins. Um, here, there are actually two axes. The horizontal one is uh, the field, uh, transverse field. The vertical axis is temperature. And uh, on the right, uh, you have a color plot uh, of the negativity or showing the entanglement uh, of this system for different field and different temperature. Um, 
and uh, the red curve is the phase boundary. The purple curve is at each temperature tracks the maximum uh, where the brightest part is. Um, so you see, interestingly, at uh, zero temperature, um, it is at the phase boundary that uh, the state is most entangled. And uh, that is understood like this. At the two limits, very small field, very large field, we have a ferromagnet and paramagnet, which are relatively more classically described. It's, it's in the middle where these two phases are competing that uh, the, the, the state is most quantum. So we have the most uh, quantum entanglement. Uh, now, let's move on a bit uh, to three-party uh, three entanglement. Uh, and in this case, uh, when you have three parties, um, the state has more, the entanglement has more flavors than two parties, even for a pure state. Here are two examples. One is called the W state, one the GHC state. And uh, they have entanglement, genuine three-party entanglement, but of different flavors. One, you can see the W puzzle, if you take out one ring, the other two will still be entangled. Uh, well, for the GHD state, if you take out one ring, the other two are disentangled. So in a sense, the entanglement in the, in the W state is more robust against uh, uh, removal or some local uh, disturbance. Uh, but the GHD, GHD state um, contains information more globally, shared among the three spans. So if you have uh, some if you have some information you, want, you don't want to lose, you store it in the W state so that uh, if something gets messed up, one of, one of the qubits gets messed up, uh, you still have part of the information. Uh, but uh, if you have some secret you want to store uh, it in the GHC state and you keep a qubit in your pocket so that uh, if there is any danger of exposure, you take out, take out that qubit and throw it in the fire and uh, you destroy the information completely. Um, so that's for a pure state. Uh, in our case, uh, we have a more complicated situation where we have uh, a mixed state of three, uh, three spins. Um, and in this case, um, for the transverse fieldizing model, we find that in 1D, um, there's one criterion that detects the tripartite entanglement uh, um, in 1D, but not in 2D. Uh, that said, uh, it's only a criterion uh, in 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 uh, for tripartite tripartite entanglement, the criterion are not as good as the two party entanglement. They only detect uh, entanglement of one flavor, and it misses uh, many entangled states. So, to end, uh, I'll I'll end on this picture of uh, the space of states, um, which is uh, the entangled states are like a sea, and uh, the separable states are in a continent that's surrounded by the sea. And uh, you have a physical system, and you change temperature or some parameter, it wanders around uh, uh, in this sea and sometimes onto the continent. Uh, so far, we only have ways, crude ways of estimating the boundary between entangled and separable states uh, for like multi partite entanglement. Uh, so, there um, also we have some brute force way of just searching through the continent, which is computationally costly. Um, so there's still um, much to explore in this field. Um, thank you.